When it comes to listening to my music, I do not like to add filters or EQ. I have a broad range of headphones and IEMs that have varying sound signatures. Personally, I want to hear my music differently with different gear. But you often read and hear from reviewers and manufacturers that a particular headphone will let you experience the music as the artist intended. That's a bogus promise and we all know it. Studios where artists record and mix have gear that you and I do not. They acoustically treat their environments. They use speakers while we use headphones, and that itself is a significant difference in sound presentation. But there are plugins that promise to change this studio versus home experience imbalance. There are VST plugins that will ostensibly make your headphones perform like a given artist studio environment. One of those plugins is by Embody. They call it Immerse Studio. This software sells for $20 per month as a subscription fee, up to $300 depending on your particular needs and a digital audio workstation or DAW, or if you want the full shebang, you can spend $400 and get the full suite. Embody reached out to me last month and asked if I would be willing to test their software. I have very little experience with virtual plugins and could not imagine how I would be using a professional software. But I figured why not give it a chance? After all, at the very least, I could try to determine if the plugin works. Embody gave me their plugin for free. They provided me their Virtual Studio plugin, which is a value of $400. I will at the outset concede this review will not be suited for any professional artist. A few audio engineers and artists have already done reviews of this plugin. I highly recommend you watch those videos instead if you want to see how the Immerse plugin works for studio use. In this video, I will try to determine if this software has any application for audio files. I will describe the promises Embody makes and set up testing parameters to determine if those claims are achievable. This may take a while. Embody gave me the top tier package of their Immerse software. This is $400. However, the lower priced options provide similar functionality. The $20 per month subscription, for example, is the same as the $400 product I received. It will provide support for all professional headphones and will be compatible with all DAWs and media players that allow plugins. There is a $300 package that is compatible only with Pro Tools. Finally, there are a couple of $200 options, one designed specifically for Odyssey headphones and the other only for Audio Technica headphones. Both versions will work nicely with all DAWs and most media players that support plugins, at least according to Embody. By the way, as a side note, a few weeks ago I posted a question on my channel. I asked if people knew who created Odyssey's Reveal Plus plugin, the same plugin that Odyssey sells on their website. Most people said some guy in China wrote that program. Well, actually, Embody created the Reveal Plus software. They confirmed this for me when I conversed with them over email. However, it appears that Embody may not have been involved with the standard version of Reveal, the one that's now discontinued. Anyway, the Embody plugins will work on Macs and PC. The installation process for your particular DNW and media player will be different, so you should do a bit of research and find out how to install the plugin with your specific program. For example, I tried Immerse Studio with Audrivana, which has a menu inside the settings screen to activate VST. There are two parts to the Immerse software. The first is the mobile application that supposedly maps your ear shape by taking a photo. The second, obviously, is the actual plugin itself. Embody says that they have a repository of ear shapes and sizes which helps them determine the best algorithm to apply for your particular ears. Once you take a photo of your ear, Embody's software will analyze it and try to find the closest match to what has been in their database. Embody says that this ear modeling will help produce, quote, a true studio mixing environment on headphones, end quote. What is the bottom line for Immerse Studio? What is it supposed to do? Well, in the simplest terms, this is for people who use headphones but want to experience the speakers professionals use in their studios. Sound engineers use speakers for the majority of their work. Headphones are used only to check their mix. So the proverbial gold standard is to use speakers when you listen to music at home, theoretically. But a lot of audiophiles have headphones instead of speakers, or have both and use them at will. The idea behind Immerse is to provide you the sound profile of a particular set of speakers from a specific studio. This sound profile is applied to your given headphone. The Immerse software has two elements. First, it has a sound profile for many professional studio headphones. This is, I assume, the frequency response for each headphone that's been mapped. The profiles are not exhaustive. 
You get profiles from well-known headphones, such as the DT series from Bear Dynamic, the M50X, the M70X, the R70X, and Odyssey's headphone lineup. The program has a generic headphone list as well, and Body says that this generic list should cover most other headphones. For the second element, the software has sound profiles for several mixing booths. These room profiles provide a room feel, meaning they have their own sound quality determined by the speakers being used in that particular studio, the size of the room, and the acoustic treatment within that room. The software will essentially take the headphone profile and apply the room feel. Several sound engineers worked with Embody to create the room feel for the plugin. You'll see inside the plugin the options to select room feel from various studios. This includes Echo Bar Studio, Diamond Control Studio, Spitfire Studio, and Music Friends Studio. I discussed Immerse Studio details with a representative at Embody. I asked a number of questions about the program and its usability. I will summarize our conversation. Embody will continue to update the Immerse software. Currently, they do not have a profile for Austrian Audio headphones, for example, but plan to correct that. Embody's goal is to support all major studio-grade headphones going forward. I asked the representative what makes the Immerse software different from, say, Odyssey and Rune's plugins. If you recall, I mentioned earlier that Odyssey's Reveal Plus is created by Embody. Consequently, the basic technology in Reveal Plus is also encapsulated within the Immerse Studio application. However, there is a difference between Reveal Plus and the original Reveal software. Rune has built-in DSP on their desktop application that you can just activate whenever you want for specific headphones. The Embody representative said that Odyssey, Rune, and Embody all use DSP. However, what separates Embody software is their focus on personalization. According to the representative, Embody's AI-driven software understands a user's hearing anatomy. The Embody software computes audio profiles, called Personalized HRTF. The representative was kind enough to provide a summary of what Rune, Odyssey's Reveal, and Embody software do. I will quote him directly. Quote, Rune has a DSP that allows users to modify the sound stream to account for deficiencies in the room. Odyssey Reveal provides presets that allows users to remove the headphone frequency response. Embody understands a user's physical hearing anatomy, creating a user's personalized HRTF, and is able to take the giant step beyond other available solutions to deliver a more natural listening experience. End quote. So, the biggest difference, as far as I can tell, is that Embody put effort into providing a somewhat unique listening profile for each user, along with the studio profiles. I specifically asked the representative why someone with Odyssey headphones should consider Embody software over Odyssey's Reveal, the original version. The representative said that the Embody software provides a listening experience that is, quote, much better and will provide clearer sound with depth. The representative suggested that we compare the original Reveal software against Embody's Reveal Plus. Apparently, the original Reveal software contains only the Odyssey headphone presets and does not include the auditory profiles. Those auditory profiles are available only from Reveal Plus or embodies other options. Odyssey no longer supports the original Reveal software. It is now in legacy status. The original Reveal plugin is free and still available for download. Moreover, the representative from Embody assured me that Embody intends to release new studio profiles in the future. The representative provided me Embody's white paper regarding how the Embody software works. I have linked that white paper in the description section below if you're interested. So, to summarize, Odyssey's Reveal Plus is the same thing as Embody's Immerse Studio, but limited to only Odyssey headphone profiles. Reveal Plus is not the same thing as the original Reveal software. What differentiates Embody software from competitors is their room feel profiles and the auditory profile which is supposedly unique to each person. Embody's program will work with any DAW, but since I am not a musician or sound engineer, I thought it best to leave testing on DAWs to the experts. Luckily, Otterwana does support VST plugins. Consequently, I decided to test the Embody software in Otterwana both on Mac and PC. The installation process is fairly easy. Once you download and install the Embody software, you should launch Otterwana. Go down to the speaker icon and select your DAC. There is an arrow next to your active DAC. Click it you will be taken to a settings menu. Scroll to the bottom and activate Audio Units Effects. You can use several plugins at once. There will be a drop-down menu. Click it and you should see the Embody software as an option in there. Select the option. Next, click the Configure button. Once you click on Configure, the Immerse Studio window will pop up. 
From within this window, you can select your headphone profile and the room presets. One caveat is that Otterwana requires you to stop the music before you can activate and configure any VSD plugins, so you will not be able to compare the effects on the fly, so to speak. To test the software, I installed one version on my MacBook Pro and another on my Windows PC. I would prefer to use the same music media software on both computers, but unfortunately that's not really possible. Otterwana will not allow me to run two instances at the same time on two different computers, so I cannot use Otterwana on my PC and on my Mac at the same time. Unfortunately, there is no other music player application that works for both Mac and PC, will allow VSD plugins, and will further allow me to use the software on both computers at once. So, I had to resort to a workaround. I installed MusicBee on my PC. I used Otterwana on my Mac. If you're not familiar with MusicBee, it is a free music media player. It supports some VSD plugins, but not Immerse Studio. This is what I used before I paid for Otterwana last year. I imported my FLAC library into both programs. I played the same tracks at the same time. I wanted to use the same DAC and AMP to keep things fair. This was, however, the next problem. I do not have identical amplifiers and DACs lying around, and I did not want to spend more money to buy identical gear just to test software. I have two Ibasso DX160 DAPs, a 2019 and a 2020 version. They have identical sound performance. Unfortunately, the DX160 does not work as a USB DAC on Macs, so I could not use that for the test. I have two Sony NWA55 DAPs. Both will connect as USB DACs to PCs and Macs. However, they do not have sufficient power for plain art magnetic headphones I wanted to test. So they are not going to work for this test. Finally, I settled on the iFi Zen DAC and the Hip DAC. I recently reviewed the Hip DAC and found that it sounds identical to the Zen DAC. Both devices will provide sufficient power for the headphones I tested on this video. Both devices were running the GTO firmware. I used the Hip DAC on my MacBook Pro M1. I used the Zen DAC with my PC. Both products were connected via their single-ended output to a passive AB switch. I volume matched the devices for each headphone. Anyway, once I got the amp DAC situation locked down, I had to find a compatible headphone to test. Immerse supports several headphones, so I chose the Odyssey LCD-1, the LCD-2 Classic, Bear Dynamic DT-1990, and the AKG K371. I also wanted to check if there are any alterations to the sound using the generic headphone profiles. That is, I wanted to know if Immerse makes a noticeable difference with headphones that the software does not specifically support. So for this, I use my Allo Audio S4X, the Austrian Audio Hi X55, and the Aventone Planar. The K371 is of some interest because it is tuned to the Harman curve. Immerse does support that tuning in its generic Model 1 profile. I plugged each amp DAC into its respective computer. I used the 3.5mm output of each amp DAC to a passive AB switch. I connected one headphone at a time to the switch. I volume matched the sources. Before I used the plugin, I made sure that the headphones sounded the same on both the hip DAC and the Zen DAC. This was to ensure that the unmodified sound was identical and that any differences that I might hear with the plugin active were indeed because of the plugin. I will discuss the overall experience using Immerse in the next section. As I indicated in the previous section, I tested the Immerse plugin with various supported and unsupported headphones. Here I'll give you a general explanation of what I heard. With the DT1990 Pro playing the same tracks with the same test setup after volume matching, there was a stark and immediate difference. The Immerse plugin actually does provide a significant difference in presentation. I tried all the studio profiles in the plugin and all of them tended to sound different from each other. There is no way for me to specifically describe what I heard because of all the permutations and alterations that can and were made. However, I will emphasize that depending on the speakers and the room acoustics you choose, the DT1990 sounded markedly, noticeably, and unmistakably different from the stock tuning of this headphone. With some speakers, vocals are recessed considerably while mid-bass is elevated. With others, there is a sense of greater depth, as if I am not actually listening to the headphones but speakers sitting 5 to 10 feet away from me. Let me give you one example. I used the PMC speakers in the Music Friends Studio profile. I kept the ambiance and the master gain settings to default. Compared to the unmodified sound from the PC, this studio profile provided a warmer sound signature with vocals being more full, mid-bass more emphasized, and with a marginally smoother presentation of vocals. With orchestral tracks, the studio profile provided greater separation of instruments, and there seemed to be greater distance between me and the sound of those instruments. In other words, the unaltered sound made the music appear to come directly into my ears, but the sound from the plugin made it appear as if it was coming from an angle. 
I next tried the AKG K371. This headphone is tuned to the Harman Curve, which the plugin supports under the generic Model X or Model 1 headphone profile. The model name depends on the version of Immerse you use. I selected the Echo Bar Studio B and listened to both speaker profiles. The difference, once again, was pretty stark. The plugin provided greater detail and clarity to the exact track I was listening to on the PC. Indeed, the unaltered track appeared warmer on the K371 with greater sub bass and mid bass melding than what I heard with the plugin. Mid centric instruments had greater separation with the plugin active. Vocals were clearer and slightly more forward with the plugin. I next tried the Odyssey LCD 1. I selected its profile in the plugin and experimented with the Diamond Control Room and the Spitfire Studio profiles. I could hear differences, but those differences were not as great on the LCD-1 as the ones I heard on the DT-1990 and the K371. Indeed, upon quick A-B switching, I could hear slight alterations in clarity and vocal presentation on the LCD-1. With the plug-in, the LCD-1 sometimes had more forward vocals and a warmer sound signature. I thought that clarity was greater on the LCD-1 when playing the unaltered tracks. Playing around with the ambiance and master gain settings within the plugin did tend to make audible differences. However, I still got the impression that the effect on the LCD-1 was more subtle than what I heard on the previous headphones that I tested. Finally, I tried the LCD-2 Classic as my last supported headphone. I selected its profile and used the Echo Bar Studio A setting. Once again, just as with the LCD-1, the differences between the unaltered sound and the altered sound was not as dramatic as it had been on the DT-1990 and the K371. Still, I could hear a difference. Using the ambiance and master gain sliders did render differing results. Switching speaker profiles also created different effects. Yet, as before, the different speakers did not make the LCD-2 Classic sound as significantly different as the Bear Dynamic and AKG headphones were. I tried the Immerse plugin with the Allo Audio S4X, Austrian Audio Hi-X55, and Aventone Planar, none of which are officially supported inside the software. I had to select the generic open back and close back options. The results were not as dramatic as with the K371 and DT1990. Indeed, I felt as if some of the studio presets with the unsupported headphones provided only a minor alteration while other presets had a more pronounced effect. I was able to apply supported headphone profiles to the unsupported headphones. In other words, I tested the preset for AKG headphones on the S4X and the Odyssey presets on the Aventone Planar. There was an audible difference between those presets applied to the unsupported headphones versus the generic presets applied to the unsupported headphones. In fact, sometimes applying supported headphone presets on the unsupported headphones yielded more obvious sonic changes. But of course, applying the wrong headphone preset is not recommended if your goal is to use the headphones as a stand-in for the studio speakers. Overall, there is no doubt that the Immerse plugin does alter the sound. All the headphones had a noticeable difference from the unaltered signature. Changing the plugin parameters also results in audible alterations. So, to put it bluntly, the Immerse plugin does indeed create an altered perception of sound. Whether this will be to your liking is something that you will have to discover. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Embody gave me the top tier Immerse plugin, which is $400. This product version is marketed to be compatible with all DAWs and media players, which I take to mean music playback software. I only dabble once in a blue moon with DAWs and have done so with only two products in the past, Reaper and Logic Pro. I no longer have Logic Pro, and I am no music professional, so other than making sure that Reaper does support the Immerse plugin, there's not much I can offer in that regard. I highly recommend you watch other content creators who have tried the Immerse plugin with DAWs, if that interests you. However, the question is whether Immerse is something for audiophiles, people who consume music rather than create it. I did not know it at the time, but I essentially became the beta tester for Immerse. I tried this plugin with Otervana on both Mac and Windows, J River, Fubar, and MusicBee. It turned out that Immerse did not play well with most of this software. On the Windows version of Otervana, the plugin kept making Otervana crash. J River would not load the plugin at all. Fubar does not support 64-bit VEST3, so Immerse will not work until someone writes an update to the Fubar utilities. MusicBee did not support the Immerse plugin at all. So I was a bit perplexed as to how Immerse could be compatible with all media playback software when most of the audiophile media players didn't work with it. I contacted Embody and let them know. I explained the issues and asked which media playback software they would recommend. Apparently, the issues I encountered were previously unknown. Embody tasked one of their programmers to figure out what happened and how to fix it. 
Within four days, Embody provided an explanation. Embody had to change some coding in the All Access plugin that I had downloaded, the $400 version. This was part of the problem. Embody also contacted some of the publishers at the Media Playback software I tested and tried to figure out how to better integrate the two products. The bottom line is this, Embody provided me a spreadsheet of Media Playback software that does work. I have linked a copy of that spreadsheet in the description section below. As you will see, the Immerse plugin is still not universally supported. Music B and Fubar, both of which are free, are not compatible. This, of course, is due to the publishers of these two software not keeping pace with newer versions of VST. This spreadsheet is also not all-inclusive. There might be another media player which could support Immerse, and if you find one that is not on this list, you should contact Embody about it. In the end, if you use JRiver, Otterwana on either Mac or PC or SoundSource, the Immerse plugin should work just fine. Embody should probably update the Immerse website so that it's clear what does and does not work. Saying that the plugin is compatible with all the AWs and media players is not entirely accurate. It appears that the incompatibility with some media players is due to those media players not supporting newer VSTs, and that responsibility falls directly at the feet of the publishers of those software and not Embody in my opinion. Anyway, if you find a media player that is compatible with VSTs, then installing Immerse is as straightforward as any other software. There is an additional necessary step, however. Embody says that they use ear mapping technology to create a user profile that is unique to you. Basically, when you launch Immerse for the first time, you will be guided through the process for photographing your ear. Once you take the photo, it is uploaded into a server, theoretically analyzed, and then your user HRTF profile will be automatically updated. Immerse allows you to take up to five photos of your ear. However, you currently cannot select among any of your photos. Whether you take one or five photos, Immerse will use the most recent one you uploaded. Embody told me that they will allow users to select among the various photos they uploaded, but that feature is planned for some time in the future. There is some very good news about Immerse. Although Embody does not make this abundantly clear in their marketing, Immerse will in fact work with streaming services such as Spotify, Amazon Music, Tidal, Cobus, or anything else that plays audio. This will be through system-wide audio integration. The best application for this, at least in my experience, is SoundSource. This is a Mac application. I downloaded a trial version of SoundSource and it found the Immerse VST plugin without any trouble. SoundSource allowed me to change all user-definable settings inside Immerse. SoundSource allowed me to make changes to Immerse on the fly, meaning I did not have to stop my audio, then change the settings inside Immerse, then restart the audio. Instead, I could hear alterations while the music played. This is different from what Otterwana does, which always required me to stop the music before making changes to Immerse. I contacted Embody and asked if they recommended a Windows program that would allow system-wide Immerse integration such as with SoundSource. They said they were not aware of any such software for Windows. Considering the vast array of Windows applications available, it is entirely possible that you will find something like SoundSource for Windows and that you will be able to use it with Immerse. What does the Immerse plugin do that you cannot achieve through EQ? That's a great question. Look, if you like to use EQ, then I'm sure you can make great headway using free plugins like Equalizer APO or an, an equivalent product on Macs. But the issue is not about Immerse as an EQ preset, though that is one way to look at it, I guess. The premise of Immerse is that it allows you to hear a particular studio sound from your headphones. This proposition is quite different from mere EQ. Does Immerse work? Absolutely. On some headphones, the difference is pretty stark. On other headphones, such as with Odyssey, the difference is more subtle. But Immerse does indeed make alterations to the sound based upon your selections. So in that sense, Immerse definitely works. What is up for debate is whether Immerse's sound alterations are a good approximation for the studio setups it is trying to mimic. And there's no way for me to know. And quite frankly, unless you sit in that specific studio, you have no way of knowing how accurate Immerse actually is. But I will leave the technicalities of recording music to the professionals. If you're interested in Immerse as a tool for your creative workflow, then please watch reviews on that subject. My only goal is to determine how, if at all, Immerse fits into the audiophile realm. Of course, it does not have to, but Embody does say that the plugin can be used by the music consumer. 
there has been at least one previous VST plugin that had vague presets you could adjust, and it was from Odyssey. Odyssey provided their original reveal software free for years. The original reveal was a simple DSP. You could select between two filters to alter the sound of the specific headphones you selected. Even though the original reveal software is discontinued, Odyssey currently allows you to download it in legacy version, so you can still use it for free. On the pure EQ stage, we have a lot of options for all sorts of operating systems. Equalizer APO is a free option. This equalizer is a favorite among audiophiles. If you need to adjust very specific parameters in the frequency range, then this is the simplest method. There is a difference between DSP and something like Equalizer APO, however. DSP software such as Reveal and Rune's built-in plugins give you presets that you adjust. This is a closed-off sandbox the companies allow you to play in. Equalizers, on the other hand, can be as simple or as complex as you want. You're still limited to the number of bands on your EQ software, but you can adjust and fine-tune those parameters as much as you want. Immerse Virtual Studio is a sandbox in which you can play. There is not much fine-tuning you can do other than what Immerse lets you do. Immerse does in fact work. Whether you have a headphone that is specifically supported or a headphone for which there is only a generic profile, this software will make an audible alteration to the music. But this is not necessarily beneficial to audiophiles. It will depend on your particular tastes. This brings us to value. You can figure out whether you want to meddle with EQ or DSP. That's entirely your decision, and there's no wrong answer. I think Immerse is an interesting technology. It works perfectly well. But at what cost and to what end? The product Embody gave me is $400. Clearly, this is aimed for music professionals, recording artists, for example. So, the flat-out truth, at least in my view, is that the $400 version is not value for an audiophile. I struggle to see how a typical audiophile will be willing to spend $400 on the very specific task that Immerse accomplishes. That is, providing you presets from a handful of studios for a handful of headphones. But what about the other pricing schemes? For example, you could get the Reveal Plus software for $200, but you will be limited to Odyssey's headphones. Or you can get the Immerse software only for Audio-Technica headphones for $200. In the alternative, you could spend $300 for the full headphone support, but will be limited to use with Pro Tools. You will not have the ability to use Immerse with media players such as Otervana. Then there's the $20 per month subscription, which will grant you full access to everything as long as you keep paying. I think whatever price bracket you fall into, you will need to figure out if Immerse appeals to you. Embody does provide a 14-day free trial, so you can experiment with the software before making a decision. Even though Immerse works, I have no way of determining if the processed music sounds just like or close to the studios the profiles are based on. I have to take Embody's word on it. For the sake of argument, let us assume that Embody has created a genuine copy of the studio sound profiles. In that event, how does it affect the average audiophile? Well, here's an answer with another question. How badly do you want to listen to your music as it would sound in a particular studio environment? I personally have never come across an article or comment in a video or forum where audiophiles are begging to hear their music in this particular way. Perhaps it's the issue of out of sight, therefore out of mind. That is, if we did not know we could have this feature, then we did not know we would want this feature. I mean, this is a fairly unique take on DSP. I don't know of any other company that offers the ability to hear your music as it might sound right in the recording or mixing booth from a very particular studio. Immerse does kind of turn upside down the notion of hear your music as it was intended. We have all seen this marketing blurb from headphone, DAC, and amp manufacturers. A rational audiophile would probably laugh at this nonsensical promise. After all, just because you buy a specific headphone, amp, or DAC does not mean you're hearing what the recording artist heard. But Embody says they can deliver music the way it would sound in a given studio environment. Paired with compatible headphones, theoretically, you might hear how the music sounds in those specific studios. But how many audiophiles want that? How many want to apply DSP to hear their music as it might sound in one of several recording studios, which might not have been responsible for recording the music that they're listening to in the first place? 
I judge value based on one of two questions. If someone sent me gear, I asked if I would buy it. If I bought the gear, I asked myself if I would keep it. Let's consider the $400 software that Embody gave me. No, I would not spend $400 on this plugin. I would not spend $400 on any plugin. Yes, I consider myself an audiophile, but I cannot fathom spending that type of money on software for me. Were I a professional artist, the conclusion might be very different, but I'm not that type. As for the alternative pricing brackets, well, you would have to be convinced that Immerse is something that you would use often enough to justify the expenditure. I think Immerse could make a stronger case for itself among audiophiles if it was more affordable. The limited versions where you are allowed to use only Odyssey or Audio-Technica headphones or where you can only use the full version on Avid Pro Tools should be half the price that they actually are. They should be around 100 bucks. That's a reasonable price given the limitations. The full software, the one I was given, should also be about half the price, in my opinion. I think people might enjoy what this software has to offer, but it will be very hard to convince many audiophiles to even give Immerse a try with the current cost. But if you disagree with me and think audiophiles would not hesitate to pay for software that does what Immerse does, then it's possible that I am the outlier. What I can say is this. If you're curious about Immerse, Embody does have a 14-day free trial. Frankly, I am very impressed with Embody's responses to my questions and their ability to fix bugs, sometimes overnight. Embody has been around for several years, and since Odyssey teamed up with them, I suspect Embody will continue to support Immerse for the foreseeable future. So, while I don't think $400 will draw many audiophiles, and I certainly wouldn't pay that much money, I'm sure some will be interested in what Immerse Virtual Studio has to offer. And, if you previously used Odyssey's Reveal program and are now contemplating whether it is worth buying Reveal Plus, then hopefully you have a better idea how to make that decision after watching this video. If you're a typical audiophile, then I do not think buying something like Immerse should be on the top of your list. If you have ended your gear journey, if you have the headphone, amp, and DAC that makes you happy already, then Immerse might be something to consider at some point. If you're always hunting for the perfect recreation of the original sound from the artist, then Immerse is a very interesting proposition to get you closer to that goal. And if you're that type, then I think Immerse is the only software out there that does what it does.